In this topic, we're going to have a look at deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. We're going to touch on how DNA was discovered, and then look at the structure of DNA and what the difference is between DNA and RNA. So deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, is made up of two nucleotide polymer strands. And these strands are extremely long, and they wound around each other to form a double helix, like you can see here. So what I want you to do is look at the nitrogenous bases, adenine and thymine, and cytosine and guanine, and notice how they are on the inside of the helical cylinder, with the sugar phosphate backbone being on the outside of that helix. Now this is important because it means that the genetic information is protected to some extent from being corrupted by outside chemical and physical factors. Just to recap, that a nucleotide has got a pentose sugar, and this is deoxyribose in DNA. It's got a phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. And this nitrogenous base can be one of four. It can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. There were a few interesting people who contributed to how the structure of DNA was discovered. The first is Erwin Shargraf. He expanded on another scientist's work by uncovering additional details of the structure of DNA. So he set out to see whether there were any differences in DNA among different species. So after developing a new paper chromatography method for separating and identifying the small amounts of organic material, Shargraf reached two major conclusions. First, he noted that the nucleotide composition of DNA varies among species. In particular, the amount of adenine is usually similar to the amount of thymine, and the amount of guanine is usually similar to the amount of cytosine. So in other words, the total amount of purines, for example adenine and guanine, is equal to the total amount of pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine. And this second major conclusion is known as Shargraf's rule. So the amount of adenine is equal to the amount of thymine, and the amount of guanine is equal to the amount of cytosine. Then there was a person called Linus Pauling, and he won the Nobel Prize for working out the alpha helical structure of fibrous proteins. So he started to work on the structure of DNA, and he looked at the three-dimensional structure of DNA and tried to model a structure based on the molecular distances and bond angles, but his structure proved to be wrong. But it formed a base for other scientists, Watson and Crick. At the same time that Pauling was working on the DNA structure, two other important people, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins, were also trying to uncover the structure of DNA, but they used something called X-ray crystallography. Now, this was a very involved and difficult and time-consuming process of preparing pure fibers of the salt of DNA and then passing X-rays through them. The X-ray diffraction patterns gave them an idea of the gross structure of DNA. So what they found out was the DNA was a double helix. And these two men you should know, Watson and Crick. So in 1953, they revealed the structure of DNA. So they used all the information that they could gather about what had been found out about DNA. So they were in contact with Wilkins, so could analyze the data on X-ray crystallography. And what they did was they used cardboard cutouts representing the individual chemical components of the four bases and other nucleotide subunits. And they shifted these molecules around on their desks. It was only upon the suggestion of an American scientist, Jerry Donahoe, that Watson decided to make new cardboard cutouts of the two bases to see if perhaps a different atomic configuration would make a difference. And it did. 
1953, they revealed the structure of the DNA molecule. So what is the structure of DNA? Well, DNA comprises two long polynucleotide chains, and these are anti-parallel. They are held together by hydrogen bonds. Now these chains are anti-parallel, which means that they run in opposite directions. So I want you to have a look at how one chain on the left, the five prime to three prime direction runs downwards, whilst on the other chain, the five prime to three prime direction runs upwards. So they are running in opposite directions to one another, they're anti-parallel. Also have a look at how to draw the pentose sugar, so that orange, uh, pentose sugar, and look how they're drawn in opposite directions to one another. Then we're going to have a look at the bases. Adenine on one chain will always pair with thymine on the other chain. Have a look at how many hydrogen bonds are between them. There are two hydrogen bonds. And guanine will always pair with cytosine. And how many hydrogen bonds are between them? Three. So adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine, and you need to know the different hydrogen bonds. So here you can see the hydrogen bonding occurring between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and nitrogen and hydrogen of different bases. So notice that adenine and thymine have got two hydrogen bonds whilst guanine and cytosine form three hydrogen bonds between them. These hydrogen bonds between the strands twist the structure into a helical shape called a double helix. And the width of DNA is two nanometers. The DNA helix has got two external grooves, a major groove and a minor groove. The major groove is wide and deep, and the minor groove is shallow and narrow. Now for each turn of the helix, there are 10 base pairs. And the distance between the 10 base pairs is 3.4 nanometers. Right, let's have a look at the difference between DNA and RNA. The first is that RNA is a single polynucleotide chain and DNA is a double polynucleotide chain. RNA has got a smaller molecular mass. DNA has got a larger molecular mass. RNA, the pentose sugar, is ribose. DNA, the pentose sugar, is deoxyribose. In RNA, the nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. And in DNA, the nitrogen bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. RNA is manufactured in the nucleus, but it can be found throughout the cell. DNA is found mostly in the nucleus, with some present in the mitochondria and chloroplasts. So I want you to press pause and copy this table down. There's another section to the table. RNA is chemically less stable. DNA is chemically very stable. RNA may be temporary, whilst DNA is permanent. And you've got three types of RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. And to DNA, there's only one basic form, but with an almost infinite variety within that form. Okay, in summary, what have we learned about DNA today? So it's a good idea to jot down all the points that you've learned about DNA. DNA is very stable. Why is it very stable? Can you remember? I want you to write that down. 
Deoxyribose is the sugar in the sugar phosphate backbone. And DNA comprises two long polynucleotides, which are anti-parallel to one another. They are held together by hydrogen bonds. And the nitrogenous bases, adenine and thymine, always pair together. And they form two hydrogen bonds between them. Guanine and cytosine always pair together and they form three hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds twist the strands into a double helix. The width of DNA is 2 nanometers and it's got, uh, DNA has got two grooves. Can you remember them? There's a major groove and a minor groove. And then finally, there are 10 base pairs for each complete turn of the helix. Can you remember the distance between these 10 base pairs? Three point four nanometers. And that concludes our lesson. The end.